Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and x -Plane 11. For this flight I am in a MiG-15. This is a payware MiG-15, uh, though not a particularly expensive one, so I was just expecting a MiG-15 and not anything else in particular. Of course, I would want it to perform properly, but um, the cockpit looks okay and uh, I'm flying a Soviet version, uh, so we see some Russian here and there. So not a whole lot of tags to help me out. It's not the usual blue-green that I would expect from a, from a Russian cockpit, but it is what it is. I'm a little bit worried about the instruments that don't seem to be working properly, like the uh, attitude, uh, the attitude ball, that ball, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem right. And you know, I just start, you know, I didn't start the plane, I just had it started automatically and it seems well we'll see what happens anyway outside it looks like this we are flying from Jakarta in Indonesia to Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam that's why I picked the plane <laughs> right I mean uh, yeah of course it's actually a Soviet livery I yeah that's good enough for me I, I don't need to be too authentic uh, this is a very long flight and I have not made such a long flight with the MiG-15 and it's probably pushing its range limits so that's gonna be tough and will require me to fly a relatively straight line so we're not gonna have a whole lot of good scenery because it's mostly water so that's downside and it's gonna be a long flight too so I'm just warning you ahead of time uh, this is not going to be the most uh, visually entertaining sort of thing but we will still be listening to the Apollo 13 audio and they're just starting out the mission they launched in the previous episode and so let me uh, start that off now if the audio will begin for me there we go alright now this has jet assisted takeoff which is one fancy feature so I'm gonna try that out let's go You can see I have the fuel information up there, but that fuel information doesn't include the external tanks. And our booster engineer reports the uh, S4B is nearly in the proper attitude. Okay, well, uh, just as to take off. Yep. From the scheduled time of separation. Come on. And we are expecting Assist more. We will have the television uh, transmitter and camera on. Uh, beginning at a ground elapsed. I mean, at the very least, we need to just get rid of that jet fu uh, rocket fuel the, as soon as possible. I don't know how long it lasts. And okay, that's it. Well, it got us to a good altitude. Alright, well... I can't waste time sightseeing. We need to go straight north, basically. So we took this diversion to the Southern Hemisphere, and now, just as soon as we arrive, we're leaving the Southern Hemisphere. So I think they're separating from the S4B. Oh yeah, the uh, artificial horizon is not working. I don't know what else is not working. The speedometer seems to be working. The compass does not. Uh, well, the this compass down below doesn't seem to, but the compass up above is. Altimeter is working. Chronometer is working. Data. Okay, we're ground, basically straight the north now. Has separated from the S4B. Astronaut uh, Jack Swigert at this time would be in the commander's couch, the left-hand couch, at the controls of the spacecraft during the, the external tank. The there maneuvers. seems to be shuddering. We should be getting uh, in an odd way. From the spacecraft, uh, beginning at about three hours, which is interesting. Ground elapsed time. 
Yeah, I can see the pylon clipping from to uh, into the top of the wing. I'm guessing that not much attention was paid to the munitions on this particular model. I do like the interior in general, even though it's not the blue green. I will have to try and figure out why some of the instruments aren't working on the usual startup. So let's see our last views of Indonesia. Well, that's not true. Our last views of Jakarta and Java. Uh, we may get some more islands that are technically part of Indonesia here and there. As far as the Apollo 13 audio, they are very, very quiet. So I'm gonna try and boost that audio. The PAO seems to be a normal volume, but the uh, astronauts are much softer than in Apollo 12. Houston, we got a groovy TV picture. Groovy. Sounds good. Uh, we're looking down the nose of the S4B minus its uh, slaw panels at this time, the top view of the lamp. Last report, uh, Swigert said they were 80 feet away from the S4B, and uh, that distance should be closing. Well, there's not going to be any help from wind. This will be Friday our longest is, uh, TV camera. We haven't determined yet which window of the command module we're looking out of. Jack Swigert in the uh, left hand couch maneuvering uh, the spacecraft command module into position for the docking. This will be our longest cross water flight since we crossed the Atlantic. Gotta say, the plane sounds like it might have mechanical problems, which is realistic. <laughs> but, uh. 
So inevitably, uh, people will ask why I didn't get this in DCS world, the MiG-15 I mean. And basically the reason is because I got the F-86 in DCS world, there wasn't a good F-86 for X-Plane 11. So I decided to get the MiG-15 here. Okay, Balance. try real hard to make sure this gets to Vietnam within two hours, but we'll see. We're hard docked to Houston. Roger, understand hard dock, good deal. Uh, Fred, one more thing on the TV, if you could come down to F-22 again. Uh, apparently maneuvering the camera inside the uh, spacecraft for an interior view at this point. We'll stand by and see if we've got enough light inside the spacecraft to get a usable picture. Transposition and docking. And if you've heard any of the previous Apollo audios, you'll know that the command module pilot is very particular about trying to outdo everybody else in how little fuel he uses to do the transposition and docking, which is. Uh, TV camera field as it is now, uh, 
we like you to open it up in that stop or so, and uh, if convenient, try and keep that bright spot out of the window. Okay. Yeah, transmission and docking is when the Apollo Command and Service Module turns around and grabs the lunar module from its little berth. They're just managing photography right now. Looks like a very interesting book you're reading. Hey, that's pretty, Fred. It's an impressionistic painting of what it looks like outside the window. Interesting gun arrangement. I think this right here is about this as good as we can uh, do. Up into the docking tunnel of the command module with the tunnel light showing uh, toward the top of the tunnel. need to look into a better sort of sun. That's not a very inspiring sun at all. 13 Houston, by the way, we'd uh, like to know how the uh, high gain antenna lockup worked. Our uh, signal strength uh, is a little bit lower than we thought it would be. Uh, it, it looked uh, like it Yeah, no. I'm about as low as you could go, Joe. I'm sitting on 4.4. .4. Oh, 
That's a pretty good picture there. CDR is verifying the docking message now. Roger. dim picture at this time. We can see uh, Jim Lovell uh, working in the tunnel area. Lovell has removed the hatch cover, inspected the uh, docking latches, and reported that uh, everything was in order in the tunnel. Uh, he should be uh, shortly attaching the umbilical to the lunar module, which will provide power to the heaters and some of the critical LEM guidance equipment, and then reinstalling the tunnel hatch. Houston, for your information, the S-4B event is proceeding on schedule. Okay, uh, Joe. Yeah, Joe, uh, uh, it's uh, concurrent with all the uh, thousands of particles that they are going by outside here. Yeah, I guess I didn't need to tell you. is uh, connecting the umbilical at this time, is that right? Yeah, that's from, uh, from Joe. Do you have any uh, detail up in there at all on the monitor? It looks like I can uh, I can make out the uh, probe and drogue a little bit, uh, but not much else. We can see the probe pretty well, and we can see his hands uh, quite well there. Sort of a side note, but I just noticed that the kilometers per hour, because that's what the speedometer is in, is not a bad estimate for how many miles an hour we're actually going ground speed. I mean, well, we'll say airspeed, because ground speed depends on the wind speed, but yeah, I mean, it's around 550 kilometers an hour, 570 miles per hour. Of course, the nice kilometers per hour is indicated airspeed, so that's why minutes. it's and During that what period it is. of time, the spacecraft has covered more than 5,000 miles. We currently show an altitude of 10,481 nautical miles. The estimate would only be relevant to um, this altitude, of course. Uh, I guess it'd be more accurate at a somewhat higher altitude. Yeah, is that the world? Okay, Fred, uh, that's a uh, 
a pretty nice looking picture. I'd like to know what settings you used to get that. Okay, I think uh, Jim's holding it now. And the okay, yeah. Okay, it should be in about F22 uh, infinity and I think the 50 millimeter. And uh, Jim uh, says he uh, thinks he hit Baja in the picture now. Okay, I think we could stand to go to F44 on that. Clouds are pretty bright. Okay, uh, we're gonna, gonna go back outside. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. We should be approaching the little island that we went on the other side of. There it is up front. That's uh, Indonesian island off the coast of Sumatra. We were directly over Sumatra, so we didn't see that island on the way to Jakarta. It's not a small okay, island, it's fairly uh, large. Okay, that looks pretty good, Fred. Your go for lunch up uh, whenever you're ready.
ready to uh, pull on them out, Joe. Okay, 13. A very important LEM, this one. Here. I've been following the curvature of the island too much. We need to break away from it now. causes the jaggedness in the clouds, the lines in the clouds, that suddenly they have appeared. Whoop, a little bit of a tape thing. Not at the moment, Jim. Uh, we had a garbled one there for a few seconds. And 
we don't have one at this moment. Okay, I can uh, I can see the S4 now on the hatch window and it's but we had a garbled one there for a few seconds and uh, we don't have one at this moment. Okay, I can uh, I can see the S4 now on the hatch window and it's Okay, yeah. Uh, suddenly we have a uh, very good picture. Well, we're more or less making the expected time. We're about a third of the way through the trip. Yeah, yeah, Still like on the external tanks, which is good for the fuel. I've got the throttle all the way up, so we can't really go any faster than this. Or I would. But, uh, yeah, this is probably pushing this plane as much as it can go. Let me double check its top speed. Mach point nine. Cruise speed uh, Mach point six nine only. We could go higher, but I don't think that'd help anything. Yeah, well, it'd help the fuel consumption, but we seem to be okay on that. No, I'll just stay in the cockpit. There's too many jagged clouds anyway. That's mostly just water outside. Well, we'll wait till uh, the s 4 does its maneuver here. Okay. Maximum takeoff weight uh, is just 6.1 tons for this. The uh, turbojet is 26.5 kilonewtons yeah, of thrust. We've just had a drop out in signal as the spacecraft maneuvered uh, out of the field of view of the high gain antenna. At this point, uh, the crew uh, should be switching shortly to the uh, Omni antennas. Well, they we say the ferry the range uh, is on. at 39,000 feet. So I'll try and go up a little bit. Its uh, service ceiling is 50,000 okay, feet, so we've got some room. Uh, Roger, Fred. We had an LOS for a minute. We lost our TV picture. Look. Okay, uh, Joe. We just had a momentary uh, drop off in signal strength again. Uh, Roger, Fred. We had an LOS for a minute, and we lost our TV picture. It looks like, yeah, we just got it back. Looks great again. On Apollo 12, they saw quite a lot coming off of it. And Apollo 13, Houston, 
uh, we'd like to change the S-band antenna configuration. I'd like you to go on the Delta. I'd like you to go manual mode on the high gain with pitch of minus 60 and yaw of 90. Over. Houston, the uh, APS evasive maneuver uh, appeared to be nominal. The lock stump time is now 4 plus 3, 9 plus 2, 0, about 3 minutes late. Uh, roger. Booster engineer reports the preliminary indications are that our uh, Saturn S4B evasive maneuver we're successful. The flight dynamics officer will be evaluating the uh, trajectory to assure that we've got the kind of separation from the spacecraft that we were looking for and also to uh, determine to what extent we're heading toward the trajectory which would impact the S-4B on the moon. At uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, there will be a press conference in the News Center Auditorium. This is the small auditorium in Building 1 uh, with Ken Mattingly, uh, astronaut Mattingly until uh, a few days ago was the prime command module pilot for the mission. And uh, due to exposure to measles, uh, was replaced by Jack Swigert. Mattingly has been in the control center and is currently in the control center observing the progress of the mission. Uh, to repeat, uh, that press conference with astronaut Mattingly is scheduled for 6 p.m. Central Standard Time in the News Center Auditorium. Okay, Joe, uh, we're right now opening the waste to wait map. Okay, Jack, we copy. See, it looks good. Apollo 13, Houston, request on the Alpha now. Over. This is Apollo Control at four hours, 37 minutes. Uh, we're now about three minutes away from the scheduled launch dump, the uh, propulsive advantage of liquid oxygen. Uh, the clouds aren't any better, well, S4B. on that side. This side is okay. The, uh, oh, nope, I just said that. Maybe this at this angle, I suppose. The locks will flow off the engine. 
spell for 48 seconds or until the tank is empty, uh, whichever comes first. The uh, preliminary plan would be for the block stump to produce a change in velocity of about 28 feet per second, uh, which would contribute to the trajectory change, placing the S4B on an impacting trajectory with the moon. Uh, subsequent mid-course corrections using the two 70-pound uh, thrust auxiliary propulsion system units on the S4B uh, would be intended to uh, correct this trajectory and uh, uh, bring it into the precisely pre-planned limits. Incidentally, if you're wondering, we're quite a ways away from when the incident happens, uh, when the service module more or less explodes. That is uh, somewhere is close to 56 control. hours. The Ken Mattingly press conference is scheduled to begin uh, shortly in the MSC News Center Auditorium. Uh, during the press conference, we will tape any conversation with the spacecraft, play that back immediately following the press conference. At 4 hours, 45 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. It really lulls them into a false sense of security. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at 4 hours, 58 minutes. During the press conference, the uh, liquid oxygen propulsive vent uh, from the S-4B was completed successfully. We also had uh, an exchange with the crew during which Jack Swigert and uh, Fred Hayes reported noticing what appeared to be contrails coming from the S-4B. Uh, we advised them that uh, this was a normal occurrence uh, during the propulsive vent from the uh, S-4B. The plan was to dump the liquid oxygen for a total of 48 seconds or until the tank went dry. Uh, as it turned out, uh, the tank did not go dry at the end of 48 seconds, and uh, the instrument unit, as planned, shut the vent off. And this meant then that we continued to get non-propulsive venting, uh, which uh, produced the apparent contrails uh, viewed by the crew. We have a scheduled mid-course correction opportunity for the S-4B at uh, six hours. It is expected that uh, this mid-course correction will be required. We also have an opportunity at nine hours for an additional mid-course correction on the S-4B to assure that it is on a trajectory which will impact the moon at the desired point. We'll play back for you now the uh, tape conversations with the crew and then continue to stand by for any live communications with the spacecraft.
This is Apollo Control at uh, 5 hours 16 minutes. This is a relatively quiet period in the flight plan. We'd like to take this opportunity to replay a tape recording of remarks made today by Vice President Spiro Agnew and West German oh, Chancellor. Oh, don't worry, Obama. I skipped over the Spiro and Agnew the comments. They didn't the have it in the audio. A communications failure at the Cape uh, prevented the release of a large part of these remarks uh, during the time they were delivered. We understand the total tape is about 10 minutes in duration. We'll play that for you now. I will spare you the 10 minutes of Spiro Agnew. So we'll, we won't quite be passing by Singapore, but we'll be at the same latitude as Singapore pretty soon. We're just at off to the time, east. We 13 to be 24,916 nautical miles from Earth. The spacecraft velocity is 12,172 feet per second. We have Booster started consuming the internal fuel. Directly. Stand by for that pad to the crew. Jim, lift off plus 15 pad. GTI 01500. Delta VT 5622. And we should have a little bit more than an hour left right now. Of fuel. As far as flight time, about the same. It's gonna be tight. Oh, 
They're really quiet right now. This is Apollo Control at five hours, 59 minutes. Uh, we're about one minute away now from the scheduled mid-course correction with the Saturn S4B, the third stage of the Saturn. Uh, this mid-course correction will utilize the auxiliary propulsion units on the uh, Saturn third stage, each producing 70 pounds of thrust for a total thrust of 140 pounds. The maneuver will be commanded uh, by the Saturn instrument unit it is scheduled to have a total delta velocity, a change in velocity of about 29.7 feet per second. The burn duration planned for 217 seconds. Now this maneuver is targeted to impact the S-4B on the lunar surface at a longitude and latitude of about 3 degrees south, 30 degrees west. And our booster engineer reports that the uh, mid-course burn has been initiated at this time. Uh, this is mission, mission control at six hours, three minutes. The booster engineer has just reported that the mid-course correction with the S-4B uh, is complete. We'll be standing by for an analysis of the results of that mid-course correction. Uh, the mid-course correction opportunities scheduled at six hours and nine hours for the S-4B are intended to impact the Saturn third stage uh, within about 200 kilometers of the Apollo 12 landing site. That would be 200 kilometers west of the Apollo 12 landing site. At the present time in mission control, we're in the process of changing shifts. Flight Director Jerry Griffin is coming on to replace Flight Director Milton Windler. Uh, we expect that the change of shift briefing uh, will occur at about 8 p.m. Central Standard Time in the News Center Auditorium. At six hours, five minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Okay, we're at 39,000 feet now. Uh, 13 Houston, uh, are you in manual or auto on the high gain? We're in auto track, uh, Joe, and uh, high gain. Roger. This is Apollo Control. It's six hours, 17 minutes into the mission. The change of ship news briefing time has been advanced. We're anticipating the change of ship news briefing to begin in approximately 10 minutes. Approximately 10 minutes in the news center briefing room. This is Apollo Control, it's six hours, 38 minutes. 
Flight Director Jerry Griffin has been taking status reports from each of his flight controllers. Everyone reports uh, all spacecraft systems looking good. The flight surgeon uh, reports the biomedical instrumentation uh, looks excellent, very clean data. He thinks that uh, when this crew completes this long day that they'll be tired and get a good night's sleep. They have about another six and a half hours before bedtime today. Booster Systems Engineer reports the S-4B uh, has been safe retaining uh, attitude control and mid-course capability, but that all pressure spheres have been dumped. He also reports to the flight director that the second mid-course correction for the S-4B may be later than uh, ground elapsed time of nine hours. He wants to get a good tracking vector to use for this final maneuver, and uh, he's not quite sure whether He'll uh, do the maneuver at nine hours or a little bit later after he refines his tracking data. He reports uh, the S-4B still has 372 seconds of burn time remaining, uh, plus enough fuel in the apps after that to maintain attitude until 12 hours elapsed time. The guidance officer is watching uh, Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert perform a cislunar navigation task. Through telemetry, he's monitoring uh, Swigert's markings, stars with the sextant. He's uh, very complimentary of Swigert's ability in this task. Uh, P-23 says this uh, procedure going very smoothly. The PAO at sounds a little hours, bit tired at this minutes. point. This is Mission Control Houston. Public Affairs Officer, just to be clear. This Apollo Control, it's six hours, 46 minutes. Uh, I'll take it back. We'll take the the line speedometer and kilometers per hour is uh, nowhere near the shift MPH now. Is underway. We will tape in the air ground, play it back after the news briefing. This is Mission Control Houston. 
so much for that theory. This is Apollo Control at 6 hours 59 minutes. During the news conference, the air ground conversation totaled 35 seconds. We have the tape of that now. We'll play that for you and then we will stay up live. This is Apollo Control at 7 hours 9 minutes. Astronaut Vance Brand has just relieved astronaut Joe Kerwin at the Capcom console. Okay, Houston, the fuel cell purge and wastewater dump are complete. Uh, roger, Apollo 13. And this is your relief Capcom shift on now. Well, good evening, Vance. Well, you sure made it back fast. Yeah, you guys uh, had a beautiful launch there. Really nice. Did you follow it all the way up, Ben? Uh, no, I, I didn't see staging. It was uh, too hazy for that, but uh, we could see it for a few miles anyway. Just a reminder, PTC okay, is uh, the passive the thermal control, their little uh, roll, barbecue right roll, to, to even up the heating okay. on the body of the spacecraft.
Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Uh, Houston here, your, your rates uh, look very stable. To, uh, looks like your rates, rates are damped out completely here. Uh, as far as we can see, it'd be all right to start the PTC. Okay, we'll give it a try. This is Apollo Control. It's seven hours, 46 minutes. Apollo 13, now 37,630 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity, 9,878 feet per second. Apollo 13, taking Earth weather photography. Photographing the Earth uh, one frame every 20 minutes for three hours. Jim Lovell has taken two photographs uh, so far. We have a reminder for the newsmen from the print media. There will be a meeting at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow, Sunday, in the news center briefing room. The writing press will select representatives to fill the Mission Control Center pool positions at that time. It's at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. At 7 hours, 47 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Oh, we got some islands oh, down there. Go ahead. Um, the last of Indonesia, really. Four and a half to five hours yet, uh, Roger. Past those islands, we'll basically be in international waters, unclaimed. We're basically at the same latitude as Kuala Lumpur now. When I say past these islands, that includes the ones directly ahead. There's just going to be a whole lot of water in front of us after that. Once again, establishing a simple barbecue roll seems to be rather an involved process. Okay. 
go ahead, man. Okay. On checklist G8-2, under step five, uh, there's a statement, disable all jets on two adjacent quads. And that's what we were referring to when we called up saying disable quads A and B. So uh, that's all fine. However, going down now to step seven, where it says enable all jets, uh, we hope that you didn't think we meant leave A and B disabled there. In that case, uh, it says written, all jets should be enabled. Over. Okay. Uh, our, our checklist has all jets scratched out and it says enable couples and all that. So uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll reestablish this thing and uh, come down to that step seven and we'll enable all jets. That means enable quads A and B, is that right? That's affirm. Affirm. You'll have A, B, C, and D enabled for step seven. Okay, real fine. Okay, I understand you're going to reestablish it. I didn't realize they used a different roll rate. Okay, recommend that uh, you put in R1 the following, 03750, and that should give you exactly a rate of 0.3 degrees per second. I mean, it seems plus. like it's the usual roll of about one roll per 20 minutes. Okay. So.
Could you say again the, the TD and ETL? We, we got a different, uh, we all heard different things. Uh, I said 65 and then corrected that to 55 pounds. Okay. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, Jim, your rates look good. Uh, it's okay uh, to start the roll again, if you'd like. This is Apollo Control at eight hours, 40 minutes. Apollo 13's altitude now, 42,400. 64 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 9,210 feet per second. They found the earth again. Well, that's because they just started the roll and everything. Okay, three, two, one, mark. Roger, copy. This is Apollo Control at eight hours, 51 minutes. Tracking of the S-4B since uh, its first mid-course correction indicates that a second mid-course correction will not be necessary. I repeat, uh, a second mid-course correction of the S-4B trajectory will not be necessary based on uh, tracking to date since the first mid-course correction. The booster systems engineers plan to wait until about 10 hours elapsed time before making a final decision on whether to perform a mid-course. They want to get uh, further tracking data from uh, some other stations and will have it by that time. The present indications are that the S-4B is on the proper trajectory to impact oh, the moon. Suddenly a lot of laughing in the background there. Point. And the booster has come up with a time based on uh, present indications, a prediction that the impact will take place at 77 hours, 49 minutes, 23 seconds. He says he will update this time later, but that's... Uh, the prediction at the present time. Uh, his studies all show, show that uh, capability to command the mid-course will exist until an elapsed time of 13 hours 48 minutes. Capability to command attitude control will exist to the same elapsed time, 13 hours 48 minutes. And we at present have uh, capability to track the S-4B until an elapsed time of 84 hours, 42 minutes, which is well past the predicted impact time. Apollo 13 altitude now 43,653 nautical miles from Earth, velocity 9,069 feet per second. OK. 
Okay, we got it. The 13 is currently a very enthusiastic weather satellite, apparently. Jim, uh, Houston here, two items. First of all, your PTC is looking very good and it should uh, carry you through the night. Uh, second point, have a procedure to give you, if you're ready to copy, we'd like to set three bits in the computer and I'll explain why. is a peculiar glitch, all right. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, slower or faster, either one, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, slower. Uh, it's a very uh, unusual thing to have that happen. Okay, in Houston, uh, stand by for a mark on another picture. Rog, standing by. Mission Control and, uh, is watching every move. Houston, if you would like, we can uh, let you know about every two minutes uh, before the Earth should be coming into your window. We think we've got it pegged down pretty well now. And you won't have to look for it so much. Do you want that? Yeah, that'll be fine, man. Okay. Houston, uh, Guido says the bits are reset, or rather, are set. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control at 9 hours 32 minutes. The booster systems engineer has just advised Flight Director Jerry Griffin that he and his group were going to pack it up and move out, meaning that 
No mid-course correction number two will be required for the S4B. The mid-course correction oh. number one for the third stage of the booster has placed it on a trajectory which is calculated to impact it into the moon at the desired point. Several of the booster people will uh, stand by and continue to monitor. But at this point, uh, everything looks very good and the majority of the people at that position will be ending a very long day for them and leaving the control center. To repeat, no mid-course correction number two will be required for the S-4B. This is Mission Control, Houston. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Uh, it's time for Fred to start looking for the Earth. Should be coming by in about a couple of minutes. Okay, he's got his uh, head out there right now. Yeah, you got that uh, pretty well picked, man. Third B. Doesn't that give you confidence? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Doesn't that give you confidence? Should they have confidence? I don't know. Oh, oh, watch out for the music. Actually, I think this is... I think that was some sort of marine thing, though. So it should be safe. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, we're, uh, we're enjoying Fred's, Fred's music there. This is Apollo Control. Fred's music was a few bars from the Marine Corps hymn. Yeah, I remember that. Obviously recorded on the on one of the onboard tape recorders. Lunar module pilot Fred Hayes is a former Marine aviator. I can barely hear him. He needs to speak uh, up. Roger, we copy. I wonder if it's just the recording or the PAO's um, version of things, but sometimes they speak oh, yeah. louder. Uh, Jack, like to verify, was that uh, 100 to 100.8 100 or 101.8? Uh, 101. Roger. Plus 
113 Houston. Uh, go ahead. The Earth is coming up in the window again in uh, one to two minutes. Well, no land in sight. Getting uh, down to uh, the last bit of our fuel. We're more than three quarters of the way there. Uh, you know, that's not saying a whole lot. We've been through an hour and a half, so we're talking about another hour, uh, half an hour or so. Roger, copy your mark. Off the top of my head, it's 6.7 pounds per gallon. Apollo 13, Houston. And we have it looks a like we've got State more than send you a request for an acceptance your convenience. More than half an hour worth of fuel. But that's the best I can say. Okay. okay it's coming Obviously, up. the fuel consumption is going to go up as we go down, but of course, we'll thrall down as we descend. So it's all complicated. We're certainly not reserving any margins here. Okay, go back to block. Looks like a uh, picture taking time again. Apollo 13, Houston. Uh, go ahead, man. Okay, uh, Earth should be coming into view. Okay, we got it. Okay, stand by, man. Three, two, one, mark. Roger, we got it. Starting to look pretty small now. Well, uh, looking at it here, Ben. Uh, hard to be convinced that even the earth now looks as uh, water and clouds. Well, I guess uh, that's what we want. We want pictures of weather, right? Clouds. <laughs> Clouds, yes, very yeah, about important. Half hour, it's covered with clouds. This is Apollo Control at 10 hours 37 minutes. Apollo 13 is 52,141 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 8,250 feet per second. Houston, go ahead. Okay, Vance, are you copying the uh, torquing angle from the uh, T-52 option 3? That's a firm. That's a firm, but stand by. Okay, we got him. Go ahead and torque him, Jack. Okay, I went. First, we need to be moving in. Starting on different with five balls. We're going to start in one hour and 40 minutes and 15 seconds. One hour and 40 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, 20 and 27 stars and five balls. Roger. <laughs> Lo and behold. Can you tell they're thrilled of, about being a weather satellite? They're already tired of that. 
So keeping an eye out for any land. Let me take a look at the in-game map. No, uh, well. Okay, Jim, real good. Can't really see in front of us much on the map. Well, we can definitely see it's not within 50 nautical miles. That, oh wait, there's some sign. Okay, uh, Apollo maybe. 13, a little bit more than 150 Sorry. nautical miles. Should have the Earth coming into view here we'll hit some land. That's promising. Okay. Finally, 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 finally. It's been a we fairly long trip. Incidentally, uh, we're uh, looking at a replay of your TD&E stuff here, and uh, TV looks pretty good. First chance uh, some of, of us had, had, had to see it. Oh, 
2001 jokes. Is that music? Oh, no. I think it's so distorted there's no way that uh, it'll cause any problems, but <laughs> that sounded <Good> like <laughs> even uh, Mission Control says good lord, or to Capcom at least. Um, dawning of the Age of Aquarius, that's the fifth dimension song. Uh, 13, Houston, uh, you're very weak. Uh Please repeat. <laughs> I, I, uh, man, oh, okay. Uh, Not repeating the song. Okay, you're seeing more land on the map. Uh, okay, this this is preliminary results, uh, but it will give you some to find our landing location. Uh, I don't think that's on the map yet right now. To be, uh, a little bit more than 100 nautical miles away. And the fact that it's plus or minus 4 kilometers indicates that you're being very consistent Oops. in judging. Still can't altitude. see it here. Well, that makes sense. Ten plus or minus twelve kilometers. Uh, comments are uh, that, <clears throat> as I said before, you're being consistent on the horizon selection. Uh, the substellar point error is averaging fifteen arc minutes, and uh, if you could uh, hold the rates to a minimum, you might. Uh, shoot for, for five arc minutes. That's the only uh, comment there. Over. Okay, I will try to go there next time. But uh, they're real satisfactory. Okay, thanks. Follow 
13 Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jack, this is the last time for the Earth coming into view, about uh, one to two minutes. Okay, I got my photographer looking up. Okay. And they're pretty far away from Earth now, so... Oh, there's a little ship in the water right there. Uh, to our 13, left. Uh, Houston, I just corrected. Actually, the Earth will come into view more times. It's just that uh, we're reporting to photography over there. Okay. Yes, the Earth won't suddenly disappear, but it must be very, very small. Interesting that the map numbers are shaking right there. Okay, Jack says I can't read the counter very well. It should be uh, 28 uh, based on our uh, start frame. I haven't noticed that before. Correction to 28. Uh, 13, Houston. Uh, uh, understand though that the number showing uh, that you read on the camera was 28. Is that a firm? Yeah, the, the readability of that thing is, you know, like half a frame one way or the other, so 28 I think is a good number. Okay. More dubious music. I'm sorry, even the music sat clearer in the previous missions. Roger, Houston copies. should start descending. I'd be expecting to see some land by now. I know it's hazy and everything, but... Basically been going at Mach point nine, so been going as fast as we can. But I'm throwing back now and going down so that we can see some land. Oh, there's some coast.
minus one six five. Zero seven zero three six. Zero four five zero zero. Six two zero eight. Minus one six five. Zero nine four five two. Looks like just the uh, stock textures in this area. I don't know if I have photo scenery around Ho Chi Minh City. I just uh, watched a Grand Tour special on Amazon. That had them going from Cambodia down the Mekong, which was interesting. Not the most interesting Top Gear slash Grand Tour special I've ever seen, but still. So I'm looking for VVDN. That is not right there. Okay. Well, VVDN is not on the map yet. Or maybe... No, that was before. That was when we were landing at Da Nang. I don't actually have Ho Chi Minh City here. Maybe this is Ho Chi Minh City? I can't tell. Mm, seems that way. Yeah, that's Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, VVTS. Let me edit that. Again, the detour to Jakarta changed things. Our next flight will also be longer as a result, longer than originally planned. Okay, the doc says very good. Basically, Apollo 13 is getting ready to go to sleep, so it's a pretty appropriate time for us to conclude the flight. Okay, ready to go. 
Oh, we do have photo scenery there. I can see it now. Next time, I plan to fly from Ho Chi Minh City to Hong Kong in the TU-154. That's the plan. Okay, uh, 13, we're not quite ready yet. Uh, we'll give you a call when we're ready. Okay, well, we won't have a whole lot of time to do any sightseeing. <laughs> Taking a look at uh, the fuel there ticking down precipitously. Where is our airport? Alright. Oh, flaps over speed? I did not mean to extend flaps that I might have tapped that lever a little bit while reaching for the throttle my mistake well I don't think we're gonna be able to use flaps you're looking oh well. in good shape in uh, all respects uh, -wise. Okay, well trimming out that error yeah, if I just sneeze at that lever, it decides that my flap, that I try to extend the flaps. So. Just the last comment, uh, Jack, would you clear Hal, please, uh, so he doesn't burn his lights out there uh, tonight? No, I We'll see you in the morning.
say that's right. And if they're lucky, that is actually the end of the day for them. This we'll see. Apollo Control at 13 hours, 8 minutes. We don't anticipate any further conversation with the crew tonight. At least we do not intend to uh, put in any more calls to them. Apollo 13 crew settling down for a 10-hour rest period. Apollo 13 is 63,312. Conical miles from Earth, velocity 7,358 feet per second. We'll take the release line down now, come back up in approximately an hour with a uh, status report. If there is further conversation, we'll come back up and uh, bring that to you. This is Mission Control, Houston. Well, get the strange feeling that I really don't want to have to go around this time. This is Apollo Control at 13 hours, 57 minutes. The white team led by Flight Director Gene Kranz in the process of taking over here in the control center. Relieving the gold team led by Jerry Griffin. Apollo 13 is 66,738 nautical miles from Earth, velocity 7,123 feet per second. We had no conversation with the crew for the past hour. I'm going way fast for this uh, altitude. They have started a 10 hour rest period. Oh, I think I see the airport the there. Well, let's ship. get into the cockpit then. Yep, definitely and don't have a whole lot ship, of fuel left. The uh, crew was performing uh, program 23, cis lunar navigation, taking star markings with the sextant. That went very well. They established the passive thermal control mode and had to re-establish it uh, a little bit later as the initial uh, PTC was not well established. It has been performing very well since it was re-established. For a period of several hours, the Apollo 13 crew uh, photographed uh, the Earth's weather Okay, One there it is. Every, uh, 20 minutes. Mid-course mid correction number one was not performed by the spacecraft. Mid-course correction number one for the S-4B, the third stage of the booster, was performed uh, just prior to uh, uh, the gold team. Some interesting coming slippage. Coming on shift this evening at six hours elapsed time. Mid course correction number two was scheduled for nine hours. However, tracking determined that mid course correction number two for the S4B was not required. And the S4B is expected oh, to impact rudder. the lunar surface in the area that uh, is desired at a, about 77 hours, 49 minutes. The impact time will continue to be updated throughout the translunar coast period. That's the air brakes. 
just prior to uh, saying good night to the crew, we did have a report from spacecraft commander Jim. Here's the landing gear. The crew had taken no Hopefully. medication thus far in the mission. Air brakes in. And we reported to Check the crew outside. that all spacecraft and That's all. They go shape. down. Okay. I'll believe it. At 14 hours, one minute. This is mission control. 20 yes. pounds of fuel left. Oh boy. Well, we're gonna stop on the runway one way or another. Either we're gonna this is Apollo slow down control. naturally, yes, or we'll uh, be out of fuel. <laughs> 14 hours, 33 minutes. Now into the flight of Apollo 13. Our digital displays oh, uh, presently God. show uh, Apollo 13 traveling at a speed of 6,923 feet per second. And at a distance away from well, Earth, I don't uh, think I could have managed to fuel any tighter than this. I probably miles. did it a little bit too tight. <laughs> the white team of uh, flight controllers I think. Uh, have settled into their respective consoles. I imagine I'm gonna just touch down on the little the arrows this time. Thank you. Time, uh, could be described as quiet, businesslike, uh, since the crew. Uh, Ooh, it's tough to handle because uh, of the flap period, uh, overspeed some issue. Hour and a half to two hours ago. Flight Director Gene Kranz, mm. uh, as is traditionally done, uh, went around the room uh, talking to each uh, member of his flight <laughs> control Fuel team zero. Uh, following their uh, changeover. Jack I Wiles don't think Buck I'm going to be able to taxi. Uh, presently uh, filling the position of capsule communicator. Well, However, maybe we can at least clear the runway at some point. Hear from Mr. Lausma, uh, assuming that, that, uh, that line isn't going any... That's a line to uh, nowhere right there. on its uh, present flight plan. A report from a flight surgeon uh, during this around the room period indicated uh, uh, the okay. flight surgeon we can take this one off. felt uh, all three crewmen were settled in and sleeping at the present time. He is recording data on the uh, lunar module uh, pilot uh, uh, and his data indicated oh no. uh, I'm gonna hit grass. Uh, Fred Hayes uh, well Went it is what it is at, uh, 13 hours uh, 30 minutes in okay mission. yeah that so was tight one hour ago. <laughs> we're now at uh, 14 hours 35 minutes into the flight and uh, this is Apollo controlled Houston and with that I'm got pause it right there and we made it though we made it uh, Ho Chi Minh City Vietnam and I'll be flying to Hong Kong next time uh, so well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the flight if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I'll see you next time.